Really? Oh yeah. So he's named Banjo because he legitimately plays a banjo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. And Kazooie because he's a kazoo? I believe he plays a kazoo. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. And that's what's... Tootie. Oh, <laughs> really? Yep, Tootie plays the flute. <laughs> and I, that's Mumbo Jumbo. I don't know why he's playing a saxophone. Or a xylophone. Yeah. I think that's a skeleton. <laughs> And then Apparently he plays everything. Well, he's magic, so. We're going back to the cartridge! Boom! Here we go? Yeah. Alright, so do we need this intro for... Yes. A continuity? Okay. Um, so we'll just intro it in. Well, <laughs> this is like in part of the... Hi! Welcome back to Back to the Cartridge! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Our professional intro system. Yes. Developed by NASA. Uh, so what's going on here? Okay, so this is Banjo and Kazooie. That's the bad guy. She's gross. Uh, oh, uh, what the oh. hell? Is that how she talks? Yes. <laughs> and her pot talks as well. Oh, awesome. What the? Oh, is she picking her nose? Oh yeah, Don't. she nasty. Oh, okay, oof. <laughs> bitch, you nasty. You nasty. Nasty, bitch. I wasn't, you didn't have me dissuaded at the eyes. I mean, okay, so this will probably take like a billion years to finish. Do you want to just skip over it? A billion years to finish yeah. the intro? Well, you've played this before, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, so... Uh, and yeah. also, this is like the Game Grumps first game, so... We can just go back and watch theirs. Um, okay. <laughs> I was... Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and skip oh, it. Oh, shit. I was okay, so basically, plot synopsis, the witch is ugly and nasty, and then the pot <laughs> just told her that the... The person in the pot there was the most beautiful person. It's basically Snow and that's, White. That's Tootie, right? Yes, and okay. that is Banjo's little sister. So see, she's cute and kind. And so then she's like, "Oh no, I'm gonna steal her because I'm a, you see, a weird penis broom." And yeah, uh, let's see if we can skip it. There we go. Okay. Awesome, awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. And then here's us. Hooray! All right, we're playing. Woo. Okay, so welcome to uh, Banjo and Kazooie, the first one, not the second one, not Banjo Tooie. Um. Although, uh, we have that, actually. We could play that if, uh, we ever get through this. Um, we will never get through this. You don't think so? What if we just really put our noses down and actually, like, have a 800-part series? It would take about 800 parts. This <laughs> game is... You, you don't know how long this game is. This is, mm -hmm. this is a lot of stuff in this game. Yeah. It, um... It's, it was... Well, it was from a different generation, really. Yeah. Um... Yeah. I mean, the... The Banjo and Kazooie's were, you know, um, games where... You know, it was supposed to take you a long time. And it's it's impressive, too, because, like, with their limit... I think I mentioned this before, and it's one of the, my fascinations with cartridge games, is uh, their limitations. Yeah. Um. So, like, you know, having to work with the limitations, because there's, there's like, virtually no limitations with gaming anymore. Yeah. It's like, much. you know, it's... The system is the only limitation, like, how good your system is. Yeah, exactly. And, like, the system... Like, the systems are so good. I mean, we're... We're quickly approaching um, uh, the point where, like, we're gonna have absolute realism in games. Oh, um, yeah, I'm great at this game. Did that? <laughs> did you just get beat up by a carrot? Yeah. And okay. I can't kill it because um, I don't remember how to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed we to be the expert at this game. I played it like a million years ago. <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> this uh, this game reminds me a lot of Conker's Bad Fur Day, ironically. It, it was kind of like that. That and Super Mario 64. Those are really the two games that I would say are, like, similar to mm -hmm. this one. So I, I decided to skip all the tutorials because it literally takes, like, an hour to do all of this crap. Because you have to do so much stuff around here. Gotcha, So we're gotcha. just going to kind of, can I, like, turn the screen on? I wonder if it gets a game. Um, so, oh, did that guy, like, ask you to, like, do tutorials? And yeah, just, and it like... was just gonna teach me, like, like, he literally goes through, like, every possible move you can do, uh... and it's just not worth your time. Gotcha. So, cause, like, it, it would take us literally, like, three episodes to get through it. Oh, um, yeah. So we're just gonna skip through that. Just go right into it. Well, you've, I mean, like you said, why don't you elaborate a little bit more? Cause you were telling me about, uh, you know, playing it before. Yeah, so this game was one of, like, three, yeah, 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 shut up. Can I skip this? No, I can't. Okay. So this game was like one of three games that were like the first games I ever played on the N64. I started on my computer with my dad um, when I was like four. And then we bought this system when we were like, when I was like six. Oh, come on. Wow. Um, and this, this Super Mario 64 and Majora's Mask were like the three games that we played. Um, and th we never beat this one. We beat both Majora's Mask and Super. So here's here's the plot basically. So she's she, captured she's her sister. What? what? She trying to is she trying to transfer herself into Tootie's body? That's exactly right. Oh. So yeah. 
So you'll see, and then there's a creepy scientist. Weird so she just like teleports herself into her stomach, and then she just like explodes. They, ba the they basically game. switch. You'll see. So 2D becomes really gross and ugly. This scared the hell out of me as a kid. This game is really creepy. I was um, gonna say this is a very Orwellian like. Yeah, it's um, it's very Frankenstein monster esque. <laughs> um, see, th this guy creeped me out. And then this scene especially creeped me out because he was like trapped in there and I thought that was really creepy because I was like six at the time. But anyways, um, so Banjo, help. And then we're not going to see exactly what happens to her just yet, but you'll see eventually she switches and so... Gotcha. That's... that's eerie. Um, so she just like basically like body snatcher? Yeah. Like, she, she basically... That's not a little bit like... She Hard was mad food. that she wasn't, yeah, it was It was very, like, th there's a lot of stuff. Later in the game, there's a part where there's these mutant crabs that are all disformed and stuff. And that scared the hell out of me as a kid, because I didn't understand how mutation worked. So I would, like, literally, like, for, like, two days, I would wake up and count how many fingers and toes I had. Because <laughs> I was worried that I would be mutated. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah, this game scared the hell out of me. Dude. It was super fun, but it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, that's, that's crazy. Um, like... I, it's funny, like, the things that, like... So do we need to go get a puzzle piece, or is... In, oh, interesting. So, yeah. So he's explaining how you enter the worlds. So this basically runs the same way Super Mario 64 did, where there's these... Instead of paintings, it's puzzles, mm -hmm. and you have to fill in all the missing spots with the jigsaw pieces. Gotcha. So there's only one jigsaw in this level. Um... And so, see, so go to the lair entrance and back when you found it. Okay. Gotcha. And then, like, some. And then this will unlock the world, basically. So oh. you, you have to get jigsaw pieces, and then that will unlock new worlds to get more jigsaw pieces. Cool. Cool. So it should be right up there. Yeah. Um, uh, awesome. So it really walks you into it. This has, like, a definitely a Donkey Kong feel to it. Yeah. Um, that, that is pretty right. Yeah. And so. it's funny, too, because, like, you were saying, like, this game creeped you out. And um, Donkey Kong, like King Cruel, like yeah. how, he's, how he's trapped in the cage, yeah. like that as a kid really like didn't sit with me well. Yeah. And like my brother and I used to dare each other to like go to like the cage on the island and stuff. And we King actually see him. we should play Donkey oh, Kong. Oh, we we definitely should. That that was another game that we played a lot on the N64. But this was one of the first ones ah. that I played. Um, so now we come back up here and we do this. So basically, anyways, this game has a lot of like kind of creepy stuff to it it's it's really good it's like one of my favorite games but man is it creepy sometimes just has like d semi adult undertones kind of yeah mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah there's definitely like i get that feeling a lot with um a lot of classic like nintendo that there's a lot of like games that were like quote unquote kids games right yeah um especially like back then because gaming was really like, now it's becoming more and more appropriate for, like, people that, you know, adults to play lots of games and well, stuff. Well, yeah, they've, and they've, they've separated out the age groups, too. Yeah, exactly. But, like, you know, there was definitely, like, uh, games like this that, you know, had had things that could be really scary for little kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we were kind of talking about that when we were picking up some games, uh, about how, like... Back in the day, Nintendo, the N64 was really the console. Like, all of the old NFL games and all of the old golf and hockey games and the wrestling games, everything was on the N64. You didn't have any other things to play it on because computer gaming wasn't very big back then. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. It really grew up. So these guys are bad guys. I'll yeah. Kill them real quick. Well, it's um, it's interesting too because like it uh, it made a change. Yeah. You know, it really did. It changed. Well, I would argue that the N64 really inspired console gaming to become what it is now. Yes. Um, I don't I don't think it's the only thing because the, the Super Nintendo was really what paved the way for the N64, but I think that I think that it did a good job of ushering in consoles as like the way you would play games for the next like five years. Oh absolutely. Well it was originally because too, like, you know, um getting a console versus you know an actual computer's com because computer technology used to be so expensive yeah and to get one for gaming was you know almost borderline irresponsible because it was like the pieces for computers so expensive and so console you know was a minimalist system that wasn't as um expense so this is what i was telling you about oh yeah i was gonna say game. we were just talking about so this. I, I was telling michael about this earlier when he was Hold, discussing playing this game see how i was telling him how the game is really um is he really a bra? Can we take I, a second to, we'll to realize that he's? I think he's wearing a bra. <laughs> there's ten of them. Ten yeah. of them. So there's ten. There's basically ten main levels. 
Yeah. Um, because there's you can get 100 puzzle pieces and 900 notes, which are those little things that I was getting. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so I can leave here. I mean, it kind of looks like a bra. <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think it's supposed to be a tank top. But anyways, I was talking to Michael earlier about how this game was really intelligent in that it, while it was kind of a Super Mario 64 clone, it had a lot of... Um, really interesting ideas that you see in games a lot now and it was the game design like if you notice each of there's three buttons each with an orange on it it didn't tell me that i had to hit the hit the buttons with oranges it just it, it was implied by the design and it's just a really simple thing that like not a lot of people do anymore because it's all waypoints and things like that i don't know where i'm supposed to go here we go um yeah and i i uh i dig that too it's um those classic like you know um gaming because it's interesting going back and playing it because now we have we have you know the systems are practically unlimited compared to what they used to be and uh <clears throat> what the hell is that these are other things that you have to collect so each <laughs> each level you have to collect 10 jigsaw puzzles a certain number of notes and then five of these dudes gotcha and if you get and that's and this once you collect all five of these um, you'll get the last jigsaw piece of the uh, level. So see, there's one up there, which we actually, I don't know if we can get for not doing it. I was gonna say, couldn't she do that, like, backflip thing that she did earlier? Yeah, that's what I think. Once you kill that purple troll doll. So they can, yeah, there we go. Alright. So, anyways, um, back then, like, I don't know, games, not all games, but a lot of games are just too easy these days, in that they give you, they just give you a waypoint on a map and say, there you go. Yeah. So... Um, and then they walk you through everything too. It's like, uh, it's, it drives me nuts with like modern games where it's yeah. like you know, uh, like the Call of Duty, um, the last one I played. I forget what it was, but like the very opening scene, it was like you were in this bar and it kind of this cool setting, setting, and then like the the enemies show up and you have to like shoot your way out of the bar, and it just like it spoon feeds you and it's like there now you have to shoot the enemy, pull the right trigger to shoot the enemy, and it's like with this like you didn't have to tell you like how to move around and like you know it's yeah. just. Well, it's, yeah, like, it, it does the thing where it's like, use the left st or the right stick to look around. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't need to know that. It's implied by the game design. Yes. And so that that's one of the things I really liked about this game is because a lot of the stuff in the game is implied simply by the design. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about really anything. I mean, it, it just kind of, it, it teaches you the basics if you went through the long tutorial, but that's it. Yeah. Um, I think we're running pretty long on time here uh actually we're like we're, we're right about because so, we had that original. i guess we'll just end it here this is a good spot to end it I mean. good deal um because we have that that five minutes but yeah we're right about time anyways uh thanks for watching guys uh and we will see you next, next time, time on back, back to the cartridge dude we nailed that one that was good nailed it. oh i got a half chub so hard right now <laughs> <laughs>